Good morning, guys. Happy Saturday. We are about to go do our two week in body scan check in, physique check in, this sexiness we got going on. So, super tired. It's 6 50 in the morning on a Saturday, and we're dead. We're so tired. We were supposed to sleep in. The dogs woke us up. You're not bringing food, right? I would love to. I'm fucking starving. Starving. We're going to scan without eating or drinking anything. And then we're going to come back home and eat and start our crazy day. Crazy, crazy, crazy Saturday. We just wanted to chill because the office has been crazy this week. And of course, that's not going to happen. So let's go to the office and scan. Oh, I don't want to do this. First. Oh, first. You want to go first? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's so peaceful here <laughs> on the weekend. I'm scared. Any progress is good progress. Any progress is good progress. Measuring your oh, weight. Do not grab the handles or move. Bleed it. It's exactly the same. You got this. I don't understand. Place your heels on the rear sole electrodes. Keep your arms straight. Your arms must not touch the sides of your body. Starting your in-body test. Oh, and paused. You saw that? The test is completed. What was the last one? I don't remember. I think you put on more muscle though, right? I don't remember. I'm scared. Don't be scared. I'm scared. Two weeks. Physique check-in. We're not working with much. <laughs> I don't know what else to do <laughs> at this point. All right, front, side, back. All right, so now let's go over our in-body scan. This is today? Yeah. All right, my body fat percent dropped from 24 to 23%. Why is my, how is my BMI still the same? My muscle mass went up almost a full pound. You lost 1.3 pounds of fat. But see, that's what I want people to see is, look, you only lost 0.2 pounds on the scale, but you lost 1.3, 1.4 pounds of actual fat. Yeah. So the scale doesn't justify or give you a good picture of. Maybe we need to hide the scale at home. Yeah, but look at your lean body mass. See, you're 101.6, now you're 103. The higher you get that number, see now look, look at your basal metabolic rate. It yeah. jumped up over, tw it jumped up 10, 12 calories. But I don't want to eat more. No, you don't have to eat more, but you'll now at the same thing, you'll lose weight. So showing you don't have to. Because now I'm in more of a keep, calorie deficit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's only 12 calories. I would stay where you are right now, but, or were you planning on dropping? No. No, I swear. Okay. I swear. Okay. With 75 hard, it's non-stop go. So we're going to have inflammation. We're going to be, yeah. you know. But we're going in the right See, look, direction. See, look, you have 10 more pounds of, no, one more pound. What? Of water weight. My water weight doesn't fluctuate much. But I do have a pound extra of water weight. It's crazy when you look at where you were. I know. Don't even look at it. 12% body fat, 113 pounds. We don't, I wish we knew what you were at 103. Like right. what, what your actual yeah. body percent fat was. I know. It was under 10, that's for sure. All right, Saturday. not a bad scan. No. Let's go start our day. Crazy Saturday. <laughs> she stole a sock, just pulled it out of her fucking throat. Week five of 75 hard has officially caught up to me. I think we're more than week five. We're almost Today's week, week five. Today's I mean, yesterday. Yesterday was week five, baby. Oh, yeah. I can forget how many days are in the week. It's too early for this One, shift. two, three, four, five. Yes, you're right. The halfway point is always where... Today's day 36. Shit catches up. We're almost halfway. Tomorrow we'll be halfway. Well, almost. tomorrow into the middle of the night. But, like, I didn't do biceps yesterday, and my bicep hurts me. Probably from all those groceries you're carrying. Shut up. <laughs> it's not real. One trip. 
one trip. <laughs> well, it's officially caught up to me. I don't want to do anything. Yesterday, I didn't want to do anything. I did two walks. You did legs. Kudos. Legs, walk, and football. Oh, yeah. You played football for like 10 minutes at a party. It was a solid 30. It was like 10 minutes. It was 30. I wanted to go. I wanted to go. <laughs> I didn't wanted wanna, to play. I wanted to play, but I didn't want to be the only girl. You should have. I should have. Day 36. Yoga. We're going to yoga. It's Sunday. 7.33. I'm dead. 7.33 on a Sunday. We've been up since 6. I don't know why our, we automatically wake up early. It's really fucking annoying. I would love just it's one day to sleep to like 9. That's a thought. I know. <laughs> We've been waking up for how long now? Years. Yeah, at least two years. Yeah, but you used to wake up. You've been waking up at five for like six years. And he used to wake up at five and go work out. And I would just stay in bed like a loser, like a fat loser. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, the earlier you're up. You have more day. More daylight. I know. You can accomplish more. By the time other people wake up at 10, I've been up for five hours. I could have. Yeah. And then we've had like three meals. <laughs> yeah. Worked out, meals. But it's not even that though. Bread, if you wake stretch. up later, I feel like then you're inclined to go to bed later. And that sounds awful to me. I just don't want to waste part of the day. Day 36. You're reading David Goggins' book. Never finished. So good. But you got to read the first one. I think. No, to... To get the full context, you have to read the first one yeah. and then this one. I'm reading this right now. And it's been super helpful. Rai said he's going to read it so that he can understand my binge eating. I'll read your highlights. I don't have a highlighter. I haven't gotten a highlight. That was like three days ago. You haven't found one in that time? And I'm already halfway done now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't have a highlighter. It's really good. It's really good. It's weird how it speaks to me. I'm sure I wonder though, I wonder though, like everybody says like, oh yeah, I'm a binger, I'm this and that, but I wonder like if people experience the same binge like urges that I have. Like I have like a voice that literally talks I to me. I think so, but I think those, you acknowledge it. Most people don't even realize it's an issue. Well, I never realized. Like I remember when I first started binging, it was when we were in the old house. And I remember like almost like the first time I had the, that urge, like it was like an anxiety and then I went and got something to eat and the anxiety went away. So I was like, oh, wait, when do you think this you started goes away me? in the old house. Right it after Emma. That. Yeah, after Emma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After I had Emma eight years ago, almost nine years ago, was when it, ha when it started. Like immediately after postpartum. Because mm -hmm. remember, after I had her, I lost a lot of weight. I was doing like bullshit aerobics classes in the fucking living room watching YouTube. You know? And then all of a sudden, I just gained a ton of weight. You were doing like beach body and stuff. Yeah, yeah. it was that. It was the the urges that started to arise that mm -hmm. I couldn't stop. Yeah, I think most people just don't even once realize you, once what you doing. acknowledge it. Though it's game changing. Now I'm trying to learn tools on how to get my urges never to come back because even though I've acknowledged them, they still come. They still creep up on me. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm trying to figure out now how to get rid of them completely. But I don't know if you'll ever get rid of them completely, but as long as you learn how to acknowledge them and move past them, I think that's the goal. Yeah. Because I think... It talks about weird things, though. It talks about, like, envisioning that you're... Did I tell you this? That you're an oak tree? No. Oh. So, like, you're a strong oak tree, and if mm -hmm. wind comes, the leaves just move, but the tree doesn't move. Yeah. So the binging urges are the wind, I'm the oak tree, and I just let them breeze through and pass. Yeah. So I acknowledge them as a feeling, like when you feel anxious, yeah. you ignore it. You know, when you feel angry, you try to let it subside. Same thing, it's just another emotion or sensation that arises and I just let it pass. Yeah. But they say when you ignore it is when you can't, you eventually give in and you can't fight the urges. But you have to acknowledge it like, oh, there's an urge. Yeah. Like last night I had it. I know, but so how, but I, I don't full. understand how you can ever get rid of the urge. I don't know. They're saying that by the end of the book that you'll, your urges will be, are supposed to be gone if you use the tools correctly. And how often are you supposed to like 
refer to this book as much as possible, right? I haven't gotten there yet. Because you can't just read it once and then, like, you're cured. I think it's a tool that you need to keep, you well, need like, to always like pull out. It says that there's seven unconventional keys to end binge eating, but not all of these refer to me. Mm -hmm. But, like, the reason I wanted to highlight is because when I'm listening to my patients and they're kind of venting and talking to me, mm -hmm. some of these, like, oh, this refers to Jessica, this refers to Jennifer, like... You know what I mean? Like, oh, this is me. Yeah. So it's like, that's why I was highlighting so that I can help people along the way. So I have, we have our wellness program. We have um, hormone replacement programs. We have different programs at the office that we offer. But like something that I'm very passionate about is like helping people acknowledge that they have a binge eating disorder and then how they can work through it. So, because I'm not afraid to talk about Whereas every, like I had this patient on Friday who said who she works out very hard. She does work out very hard. We won't say her name. Um, but she's always stuck in this where she'll lose 10 pounds, but then she gains back 15. Like, so I told her, I, f I finally said to her, like, I think it's time to just acknowledge, like you have a problem with food mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to acknowledge that. And, um, I'm, I'm hoping that these little seeds that I plant with her, work um because i really care about this patient but um yeah she definitely does not want to well, admit that she has a she has a binge eating disorder of I some don't sort think people even realize that's a thing because before you ever came to I me didn't and realize. you said like you had like this epiphany and you came to me and you're like you kind of like confessed you're a binge eater i'm like oh, what the fuck's a binge eater yeah like i didn't know that was neither like a thing neither. like i know people binge i googled eat. you know i told mm -hmm. you how i found out i googled how why can i lose weight but i can't keep it off because i know how to i always knew how to lose weight but it would never stay off like it would be a very short period that it yeah. would stay off so that's how i found out and then i said like it like the first thing that popped up was brain over binge it's a book by well, the only time you were really losing weight is when you were doing these drastic crazy diets hcg always yeah they, that's like that. what they talk yeah. about that this is that's the trap you fall into yeah and you restrict 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 and then you gain even more because yeah. you and then afterwards you blow up because you're you restricted so much yeah yeah so i'm sure drastic diets like that for binge eaters is terrible not the way to go terrible that's yeah. the key i think that these yeah. people don't understand like keto this everything works it's just finding what works for you and consistency and consistency too. yeah because that's the thing is that like a lot of my patients like will start something and then like four weeks in they're like this doesn't work and i was like well you didn't gain all this fucking weight in four weeks you want it all to come off in four weeks like that's not real yeah and then i have to check them some of them quit um, I'm not gonna lie and some of them listen to me some of them get mad at me because I give tough love at first and then They're hugging me and kissing me after their wedding photos come out and they're like wow I looked awesome and I didn't fucking have to crash diet for six months to get ready for my wedding So it's like yeah, we can do this together But the nice thing is is that I feel like I'll always be it's almost like a recovery state where like I'm constantly like fighting my own battles Yeah, it's like and I'm addiction. not afraid to talk about it. Yeah but so it's kind of nice because I can relate I think to people to patients. No, I think it's more common than anyone thinks. Yeah It's just like, like acknowledging we got to find a photo of when I was 268 I don't think I have any photos. My heaviest weight was 268 pounds and I did not have bariatric surgery When I went in to have Emma, I was 209 and I remember I got on the scale in the maternity ward and Ryan was sitting in a chair and he looks over and he goes You weigh more than me <laughs> And I was like, if you ever tell anybody what I weigh, I'll kill you. But I weighed more than you when I gave birth to him. You were 209? 209. Because I was 208. Oh. So that's why I said it. Yeah, but I don't think you were that on the day that I gave birth no, to him. No, but that was my heaviest weight was 208. My heaviest was 268. And that was after Emma. That was when I went into a spiral yeah. and my binging really started. Got a dog on my ass. Oh, baby. Our annoying um, ass babies are so fucking annoying. Um, Baby, your coffee! Watch out, horse. Ooh. All right, that's enough discussion. TED Talk. Quick little. Quick little sesh. Sesh. <laughs> on what books we're reading. The binge code. And how 75 Heart is going so far. We're going to try to record a podcast today because we got into a huge fight the other night and it was really funny and I think we should talk about it on our podcast. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. We'll be back. We're going to go to yoga now. Okay, thanks. Bye.
Okay, it's good. I don't know how bad I get this on. Hold on. Let me bring it down. Oh. <laughs> I'm stuck. You need help? Legs are trashed. Melissa, it's always a pleasure not. <laughs> Bye. Gabby. We're Bye. dead. We're dead. Done. Until Saturday. Yes. I'm not gonna be able to walk today. Holy fuck. All right, just finished training with Melissa. I am dead. I'm always so fucking nauseous afterwards, but I just got to TLF headquarters. We're gonna go see the new line that just came out and I'm gonna give some of my peeps a little Botox. I bring a lunchbox of Botox and filler to greet my friends because I'm a good friend. But we got filler. We got Botox. We are good. Literally, like, <laughs> I'm so excited for this new line they have coming out. It's so freaking cute. I'm like damp from that workout. And then I have to go to work. I should actually ask Ryan to bring me clothes. Hold on. Let's see. Hi. <laughs> Can you bring me clothes to work? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, anything. I'm, I'm My clothes are, like, soaked, and I'm, I can't sit at work like this. You gotta tell me exactly what to bring, because I'll bring it with the wrong thing. Just bring me a Nike set. Downstairs, it's green. It's like an olive green. It's a bra and shorts that match. And then in my closet, on the left bottom, yeah. there is a... Um, black Nike sweater. If you okay. could please grab that for me. Okay. All right, baby. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Love you. I lunch okay. love that. You okay. okay. I'm not for anything. It. It. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Bye. <laughs> Bye. He's so good. I could literally ask him to bring anything, and he never gets annoyed with me, like ever. So, okay. Let's go inside. younger me. definitely me I've literally been running around all day today I have still in my workout clothes and <laughs> we're at the office and of course somebody needs to be injected so I smell from the gym so it's just one of those days where we've been running around Perfect. Just score to your chin, your crow's feet. We're gonna hit her little jelly roll. She doesn't like the little, show them, smile. She doesn't like this little fat pad she has right there. So a little tox there, and then we're gonna dissolve onto your chin. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have fat. we've filled her chin, which looks really good, but if you're someone that tends to like lean on your chin a lot, you can move filler, which she does. I feel like I always see you like that. So you have to be careful. Alright, we're getting rid of her bra fat. This little extra boob she has. Side. like how wide her nose is so she wants to try to see if we put a little bit of Botox here if it'll relax the muscle so that she can't and like slim her nose I mean in theory it sounds great when I get nervous I have to put my <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie smell <laughs> so I'm putting tox in her nostrils to see if it slims her nostrils I have a couple patients that have gotten this done before and they keep like coming back to get it done but I never get to see it 
done. So, but they ask for it again. He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, by the way, is our office manager, Angela. <laughs> She's beautiful <laughs> in all forms. It's okay. It's just because I just abused you. Torture over. I know you're bleeding like crazy. Get a lot of coffee today? Just one? But I'm a bleeder. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see how she looks in a few days. I'm going to go home and shower now because I've been like this since 6 in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Bye.